Hey guys, it's Ginger with Gingerly Designs and Soulful Things. And today what we're gonna be creating is some backgrounds. I am gonna show you what type of medium I use for the background on the substrate. So if it's a canvas or a wood block, and then I'm gonna show you how those products take various paints, three or four different types of paints. So let's get going, come join me. Hey guys, so I am going to show you how several different products, different medias will work on the different backgrounds that I showed you in one of the previous videos. I have my dried bits of background, like blocks of wood or, or cloth canvases, depending on what I put it on, uh, what substrate I put it on. This one was the white gesso. You can see there's still like a little lump there possibly, but otherwise in general, it's pretty smooth, but it cleared up most of the texture of the fabric, except around the edges. This is the plaster. And remember I mentioned some about if you do it so thick, it might crack. There's an example of that right there, but it definitely covered up all the fabric texture and almost all the way to the edge, to be honest with you. This is the molding paste on a wood block. There's definitely some peaks and valleys in here, which I love, and it 100% covers up all the wood. And then this is that product that I told you guys about that I'm hoping to have on the website available soon, or at least tell you where to go to get it as soon as I find the um, retail place to be able to purchase it. Um, and it's got that kind of chalky texture, but there are definitely peaks and valleys on this as well. And um, I did scuff it up a little bit with a sanding block, which I mentioned to you guys that you can do with that product. So that's a good one. I also have this black gesso canvas, but it's very specific to which products will even show up on it. So I'll pull that in either at the end or as I'm going, I'll just kind of pull it in, but it's not gonna be in the frame the entire time. So I pulled out a few of my favorite products that I often um, use at some point or another during the steps of painting. Just wanted to show you what it looked like when I put them on the different uh, surfaces and how these products take these different uh, mediums I'm going to use to show you. <clears throat> so these are watercolor pencils and I'm going to try to do most things in a gradient of like blue greens just so that it kind of looks harmonious. These are watercolor pencils. With these guys you can either do it like straight on without um, wetting the canvas first, the surface first, I'm just gonna go ahead and put, I'm gonna start on this far left side um, with a couple of different colors just to show you what I'm talking about and how it takes it. Um, these are fun to use and make all kind of marks. I'm limiting my location of it and so it's kind of hard to um, show you exactly how I'd use these in a painting, but right now this is just an example of how these different products take the different mediums. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so what you can see already is that these ones that have fabric really show the texture of the fabric, even though they've been covered with another product on top. Um, this is the wood. It doesn't have any grain to it the way that these guys show the fabric itself coming through. And this one, you can see there's like some little bumps because of the chalkiness of this background product that ends up coming up as um, as like a sandy, chalky um, look, texture to things. Okay, so um, these are the watercolor pencil marks made on dry surfaces and they are, the watercolor pencils are dry as well. So I'm just gonna take this brush because I often do this where I'll like kind of smudge it around a little bit. Maybe not completely because I don't necessarily wanna lose all the hard lines, but it, um, but I do want it to kind of blend a little, or in this case, like on the fabric, you can kind of blend it out a little and it kind of makes some of that uh, fabric texture go away. Um, in general, it does not take much water, but it really depends on the look that you're trying to achieve. Uh, another way, I keep on saying that I did this dry. Another way that you can do it is you can spray with a water bottle first your surface and then put your marks on it and wherever the marks cross over the water it's going to kind of melt the way that this does but in the other spots it's going to stay solid i have a tendency to do it this way more dry and then take a wet brush and smudge it around okay see this one it's a little bit harder to get rid of the lines um you have to be a little bit more aggressive because of the texture that it's on because those lines actually sink in between those bits of sand and so it causes it to kind of, um, you have to be a little more aggressive about getting rid of the lines, as you can tell. Um, again, like I said, these, it kind of makes some of the fabric disappear, but not completely. 
And on the gesso, um, gesso has a little bit of a sheen to it, so it doesn't absorb and sink in as much. It kind of sits on top and will dry on the surface. Plaster, however, sinks in almost the way that watercolor paper does. As well, this product does the same thing, this background product. It takes it on almost like watercolor paper. Um, the molding paste is somewhere between. It has a little bit of a sheen, but it also absorbs a little because it is a little bit um, chalky. And so it sinks in a little, but in general, it also stays on top the way that the gesso does. So that's our watercolor pencils. Um, these are watercolor crayons, which are super fun. I love these things. Um, they just are great for various stages. But again, I'm just gonna show you how they work on these surfaces and how these various surfaces take these products. So we'll have to do another video about like how I use the specific products in art, like in a project, as opposed to this just being how the products work. Or really it's more about how the backgrounds take the products and how they look different. So I'm kind of using those same little colors, uh, you know, a couple shades of blue with a touch of green in one of the blues and then gone ahead and using a lime green. Um, again, watercolor pencils, I mean watercolor crayons, you can leave them the way they are, or you can come back with a wet brush and kind of smudge them in. They're a little bit more dense than the, than the colored pencils, the watercolor pencils are, because these are crayons. So they start out almost kind of waxy in a way, and then um, they end up uh, melting kind of the way that the pencils do. Um, Oh, that gesso, it's just so funny because it just wants to sit right on top. And then, um, so with like direct water on gesso, it's a little bit trickier. You kind of have to maneuver it a certain way. Um, so, um, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more because again, it, this, this product has a tendency with that sandiness to be a little less, um, it's a little more difficult to get rid of the actual lines. So those are the watercolor pencils again. I mean, the watercolor crayons again, you can see they almost act kind of waxy. They're sitting on top of this gesso, not sinking in. They're wanting to sink in a good bit on this plaster and it's acting more like watercolor paper. These guys, um, the molding paste is somewhere in between where it's partly sitting on top, but also partly wanting to sink in. And this product again, acts a lot like watercolor paper. However, it's harder to get rid of the hard lines. Okay, so that's our watercolor crayons. Now I'm gonna show you straight up watercolors. Um, and I'm gonna use a couple of different, I'm gonna use these first three colors, this green um, and then one of the blues, or then two blues. Um, it goes on, it ends up looking very similar to those watercolor pencils after I added water to them but it goes on very differently. You know, it's pretty wet, and so it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry. It also has a tendency to want to turn into a new color as opposed to being able to leave them kind of separated when, that you can do when, when you're using the pencils or the crayons even. It wants to kind of just turn into a new color unless you wait a little bit longer. I am a little bit impatient when it comes to waiting and doing art, and so I have a tendency to make my art um, a little bit more forgiving that I can go on to the next step and not have to wait so long. Oh, there was a spot of red in there, so that's kind of gonna totally make it look different. Um, that is one bad thing about watercolors and pans is that uh, if you get some of your other colors in there, it turns, it's very difficult to get it out. You have to be very aware of it. Um, so the watercolors themselves, as you can tell, it, uh, it like I said, it really just kind of wants to turn into a new color. With the exception of, again, this product, because this product absorbs so quickly that you can actually blend the colors instead of just making it a new color. And so mixing the colors, you can actually blend them. So this gesso sat right on top and you can see exactly where I put the green, you can see where I put the light blue, and you can see where I would put the dark blue. This guy is the plaster, soaked in a good bit up here. It looks a little bit more like watercolor paper, you can tell, but it's hard to blend it, but you can see a little bit of that uh, green, light blue, dark blue. That's where the red got in. 
Um, but you can see this is the molding paste. You can see a little bit of the green light blue and the dark blue on top. And this is the product that I keep talking about that you can see like it's kind of blended where you can actually see green underneath the dark blue. And so it actually likes more of the colors come through. Another product I'm going to show you guys um, is, are these uh, liquid acrylics, which they're great. I love them. I use that um, FW brand. They're fantastic. They come in so many different colors, and you can blend them and mix your own colors if you want. Um, I put a little bit out already on this plate. And again, I'm going to use um, a gradient of colors. I use this product. I use my finger a ton with this product. You can use a brush, and I do use a brush sometimes, but really honestly i use my finger and um, a water bottle more than anything with this product because of the way that it uh it just spreads so nicely sorry i totally didn't show y'all what i was doing with that one it spreads so nicely um but like i said you can use a, a paintbrush but my finger just always seems to i don't know i, I just like to use my finger a lot that gesso is just so difficult with blending into new colors. It's so funny. Um, the uh, alcohol inks, um, not alcohol inks, but the acrylic inks, additionally, what's great about them is um, you can add some water to them, like I said, and it causes them to kind of meld and spiral together. So particularly if, but see the spray off, so you have to be aware of that. But particularly if you blend some of the pearlescent with some of the um, non-pearlescent, it, it blends nicely. It'll cause like a little pearlescent to go over the other areas. So it causes almost like a little um, marbling effect in a way. That gesso, it does dry very quickly on it, but it also doesn't let you blend the colors very well. This great thing about, again, this stuff is once you wet it like this, you can move it around some and kind of get different effects if you want. So that's the, out, that's the acrylic, liquid acrylics, and they're almost like an ink texture. The, um, I, have a, I have a white one also that sometimes I'll come back and put on there because it causes all that marbling like I was talking about that um, I'll use that to highlight at certain points. But those are the acrylic inks. Incidentally, this black, especially these pearlescent ones, will show up on there. And then, but then like the non-pearlescent doesn't really show the color unless you go over something else that's already there. And then obviously it's gonna show the white. So those are all the acrylic inks on that black gesso. So then another thing that I often use on my uh, first steps is just straight up acrylics. I will water them down sometimes, but just for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to. But here are um, four different acrylic colors that I'm using. I'm ha I have them on my, actually five, I put a metallic on there too. I have them on this plate. And um, honestly, these are just the craft paints. Like I use all different levels of acrylics, but these are the craft paints. I loved Martha Stewart. She doesn't sell in Michaels anymore. I'm not sure where you can get her paint anymore, but um, I do love uh, certain craft paints depending on what type of painting I'm making. It, it works perfectly. And then other paintings that I'm making, I have to use the higher quality like golden these are fluid acrylics, as you can see on that top. So they're similar texture as a craft paint, but they're so smooth. It's like butter. It, they're golden. is just one of my very favorite, very favorite brands. Um, but what I'll often do is um, I'll spray my surface a little bit, and then I will start to use the lighter color of acrylic first. And depending on what I'm doing, I go in various directions. But again, right now, I'm just trying to show you how the different backgrounds take different types of medium. Um, I layer a lot when it comes to painting. And so that is, um, you know, multiple shades of similar colors. So I don't get too far off of the background, um, like the tint of it. So like if there's a lot of purple in the blue, I don't necessarily jump into a green one all of a sudden. 
um, but it depends on what I'm doing. But that's a couple different shades of blue. Again, depending on what you're doing, you want to add water, you want to not add water because it might dry faster or slower or whatever. Um, I often will add in some white and I very often will add in metallic, which I will do for you in a second. Um, again, I don't know if you can tell, but this guy going in, which is the molding paste, is very slick on top. This has a little bit of tooth to it, so it grabs a little bit more, and that's the plaster. The gesso, very slick on top. And this product grabs a ton because of the chalky nature of it. And then um, this would be the metallic on top of the others, which that metallic just adds such an amazing pop. It's just so pretty. You can't, you can't. I have a hard time not adding metallic when I'm painting because it's just so pretty. Um, <clears throat> okay. So this area, you can tell, I often end up doing this type of a thing for my beach scenes. And I will do, I will use acrylics and a little bit of water to get the base of the beach scene, let it dry at various layers, come back with more texture. I also happen to put some texture before I even start painting, but that'll be another tutorial in the future. I also sometimes will get this acrylic background on there and come back with the, the liquid acrylics. And I will even sometimes, especially these watercolor pencils, after I have this acrylic down, we'll come back with water pencils to highlight and then come back with the liquid acrylics to kind of break up those pencil marks. And it also adds yet another layer of depth. Um, sometimes I start out with straight up watercolors first on the background just to give it like a really nice pleasant background and not just stark white. And then I come back with these acrylics, so on and so forth. Um, I would definitely say that it depends on what I'm doing for if I would use gesso straight up. Um, a lot of times I use that if I'm going to do acrylics, spray it with water, and then take some off with like a paper towel, let's say. The plaster is pretty forgiving, actually. It lets you blend colors. It lets you do kind of fun stuff with it. And once you put that acrylic down, it's easy to put these other watercolor pencils on top. The molding paste I don't use as a background as much as I do as a texture on a background. So when I want to make like waves, make it look like it's the beach scene, make waves or make where the sand line is, I'll use this molding paste in a certain way with like a palette knife to pick up that look, to give it that depth. And then this product I most likely use the most, I would say, um, because it just absorbs things great. So those are some various products. I would say after that, I would sometimes bring in these wax crayons, which are just like a fancy crayon, if you will, but they're wax. So once you put that down, you can't put water on top of it. You can put water on top of it, but it's not gonna absorb, it's gonna roll off. I oftentimes use chalk pastels. Those also, once they get wet, they kind of almost go away. Um, but sometimes I'll put chalk pastels and then come back with just a little dry brush of gesso and that adds kind of a neat texture, another texture background to it. But in general, that's how these different backgrounds take a couple of different products that I start most of my paintings with. So I hope that that uh, makes sense and that that helps out answer some questions when you're thinking about getting some new fun supplies to start something new creative and to have a good time with some new medium that maybe you don't often use. Uh, just remember, you can always paint over it white and start anew. Or if it's on wood, you can actually sand it all off if you want to. So don't be intimidated, don't be threatened, just have a go and enjoy yourself. But like I said, hopefully that answers a few questions for next time when you go in to purchase. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and doing some fun creative stuff. I hope I answered some questions for you or helped kind of solve the mystery of what different types of paints you should start with and what the different backgrounds do when you apply those paints. And so if you have any questions or any requests, please leave them down below in the comments. And please don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much. Peace out. See you next time.